last question from this section. If the cabin pressure in an airplane is less than 70 kilopascals, passengers can suffer altitude sickness. To the nearest kilometer, at what altitude is the atmospheric pressure 70 kilopascals? So again, in this one, you would get the following formula. They would tell you that pressure is equal to 101.3 times by 0 0.882. where and H. H stands for the height or the altitude. So in this question, they want us to find the height and they tell us that the pressure is 70. So you'd go to that equation and say, if I had this equation, what could I plug in? I could plug in 70 for the pressure. And I want to solve for the height. Again, right now, oh, and this, I think, is in kilometers. Again, right now, we don't have any way of solving for an exponent because you haven't learned logs. So when they introduced this in the textbook, they're expecting that you type the left side into y1, the right side into y2, and find out where they intersect. So let's say you were on a zoom 6 or so regular window. You typed in 70 into y1. At 101.3 times 0 0.88 to the x into equation 2. Now if you hit graph, oh, 70, there we go. If you hit graph, does it make sense that you wouldn't see the 70? Because the 70 is going to be a horizontal line at 70, and we're only going up to 10. See, this graph looks wonderful right now. It doesn't really show anything. So as far as your window goes, for my y max, maybe I'll put 100, just so that I can for sure see that 70 lines show up. And my other graph shows up. Luckily, they intersected on this screen. So now I can go second, calculate, where do they intersect? Five, enter, enter. Enter at 2.89. Okay. It says to the nearest kilometer. So now that I've read it, at about three kilometers. Question, has anyone had altitude sickness before besides me? So if you go up really high, you have the possibility of getting altitude sickness. As I mentioned before, and I have the flag up over there, I lived in Bolivia for a year. Bolivia has two capital cities. It's been in the news a little bit lately. They had an election. The election was disputed for fraud. The president that won the election 
ended up resigning because of protests and has since fled the country. So the country's sort of like without a president right now and they're figuring things out. So Bolivia has been in the news. Bolivia has two capitals. One of those capitals is La Paz. La Paz has the highest international airport in the world. As far as connecting to this question, here you can get altitude sickness at about three kilometers. The airport in La Paz is about four kilometers above sea level. So you can already get altitude sickness at three kilometers, but the airport itself is at four kilometers above sea level. So they have a place in the airport for people who come off the plane, get altitude sickness right away because your body's not used to having not very much oxygen in the air. They have a place in the, uh, in the airport for it. One of the natural remedies that they use in the Andes for altitude sickness is chewing on coca leaves. Now, coca leaves are notorious because if you refine them, that's what cocaine is made from. But coca leaves by themselves actually have lots of medicinal value. And if you chew on a coca leaf, it's not like you're taking cocaine or anything like that. So the airport itself is at 4,000 kilometers. Just the pressure itself, when you go from, uh, this is on the video, who cares? Um, just when you travel to those different places, it's crazy. So I flew from one city in Bolivia, Santa Cruz, which is at about 250 meters above sea level. And I arrived at La Paz, which is 4,000 meters above sea level. So a couple of things. First of all, I wear contacts. So I have a little bottle of my contact solution. When I got up to La Paz, since the last time I opened that bottle of contact lens stuff was in Santa Cruz. The pressure inside of the bottle was Santa Cruz pressure, but the bottle was sealed because the lid was on it. When I got up to La Paz, the bottle was like ready to burst. It was so like, you know how normally, even if it's closed, you can like squeeze a bottle in a little bit. This was just tight with pressure. And as soon as I opened up the lid, air shot up because of the change in pressure from one place to another. Other things that were really weird, I had some pens where because of the change in pressure, the ink was just flying out of it. Just, just, just deciding to pour out of the pen because the change in pressure was pushing the ink out of the pen. And the same thing happened when I flew back from La Paz back to Santa Cruz. All of the things, like all my bottles were like scrunched in. And it's really interesting because you go from, it's only an hour flight, but you go from so low to so high so quickly. Now, luckily, when I flew, I never had the altitude sickness. But later, I made the trip again by bus. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I woke up. I felt like I couldn't breathe. You get like, almost like you have the flu. Huh. Sounds great, hey? Um, you're shivering, you've got cold sweats, and you just feel like you can't breathe because your body's not getting enough oxygen and it's trying to put you into some sort of shock. Anyways, that's what altitude sickness is. And if you can get it at three kilometers, the fact that the airport is at four kilometers is pretty crazy. Just to put that into perspective, I think there's only two mountain peaks in Canada that are higher than the airport in La Paz. Now that's not to say that La Paz has like decided to take the top of a mountain and put an airstrip right on the top. Um, the Andes Mountains at the very top are really flat. And so they have like this huge flat area that's four kilometers above sea level. Okay, questions? for practice on this one, number 14.